Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. World Airlines today face significant challenges from the global economy, but also opportunities created by the introduction of new generation aircraft. British Airways is no exception. Keith Campbell reports. United Kingdom-based British Airways, or BA, is introducing the Airbus A380 Super Jumbo airliner on its Johannesburg route. The formal launch of the service brought BA Managing Director for Brands and Customer Experience, Frank van der Post, to Johannesburg, where I asked him about the challenges facing the global airline industry. Van der Post explains the role of the Airbus A380 in the company's global strategy. Well, one of the challenges we have is the, uh, the fuel price, uh, obviously, um, and other challenges we have are around the taxation and local legislations. Um, yeah, our response to fuel prices um, and the cost of fuel is clearly uh, more fuel efficient aircraft. Uh, that's why we've ordered 12 A380s, which are 16% more fuel efficient than the, uh, the aircraft they replace. Uh, and we've ordered 24 787s which are roughly 30% more uh, fuel efficient than the aircraft uh, they replace. So that, those are some of the ways where, um, where airlines will address the, the issues. Um, for us it's, it's a perfect aircraft. We have it in a 469 seat uh, configuration. Um, yeah, typically we would fly it to some of our longer distance destinations. Um, where there is, you know, where we can uh, can bring that capacity in. So Los Angeles and Hong Kong are the uh, the first two, and then obviously we're very proud to start on February 12th, flying to uh, to Johannesburg. Uh, so for us, it's um, it's an aircraft where we can bring capacity into key destinations, and then either transfer them to London or as a point to point. Um, for us, it's it's a perfect aircraft. We have it in a 400 and 69 seat uh, configuration. Um, yeah, typically we would fly it to some of our longer distance destinations, um, where there is, you know, where we can uh, can bring that capacity in. So Los Angeles and Hong Kong are the uh, the first two, and then obviously we're very proud to start on February 12th, flying to uh, to Johannesburg. Uh, so for us, it's um, it's an aircraft where. We can bring capacity into key destinations and then either transfer them to London or as a point to point. Um, for us, it's, it's a perfect aircraft. We have it in a 469 seat uh, configuration. Um, yeah, typically, we would fly it to some of our longer distance destinations. Um, where there is, you know, where we can, uh, can bring that capacity in. So Los Angeles and Hong Kong are the, uh, the first two. And then obviously we're very proud to start on February 12th, flying to, uh, to Johannesburg. Uh, so for us it's, um, it's an aircraft where we can bring capacity into key destinations and then either transfer them to London or as a point to point. How important are its South African routes to British Airways? Uh, very important. I mean, uh, obviously we, uh, you know, we, we've linked up with the Comair here, who uh, fly franchise uh, BA, and that gives us a great distribution in uh, South Africa. Um, you know, we have great services to Johannesburg and Cape Town. The Cape Town is is um, in the winters twice daily, um, and then from May onwards, we'll go to ten a week. Uh, in the summer months. Um, so that I think is a clear demonstration on, on how important Cape Town is and then obviously at Johannesburg with you know 747s and, and now the A380 uh, you know, clearly demonstrates I think uh, the importance of this market for, uh, for BA. At this point in time with the four A380s we have delivered now um, we'll, we'll start with three times a week um, but this year we're going to get another five A380s uh, coming in um, and that will allow us to increase that, um, that frequency to uh, six times a week. 
Other news making headlines this week, ArcelorMittal will review its mining strategy, an effective universal climate change agreement needs cooperation, and a carbon footprinting guide will help deal with an increasingly challenging world. Steel producer ArcelorMittal South Africa reports that protracted shareholder negotiations have been the main cause of a delay in it progressing with plans for Greenfield's Northern Cape iron ore mine. The mining strategy was designed at a time where we thought there was growth in the domestic market. As you will recall, this was the heyday of 2008 um, and we thought we would be ramping up to 10 million tons per annum potentially as a long-term target um, for our, our plant. Given where we are uh, and the revision in growth prospects in the region, that may now need some recalibration. That's the first point. The input of cities is needed for the Universal Climate Change Agreement, which is currently being drafted to be effective. UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Executive Secretary Christiana Fugueras said at the recent C40 summit in Johannesburg. So I invite you to work together to show national governments that a strong international agreement that is vertically integrated with city and some national policies and measures is in everyone's best interest. Yes, there are typically more layers of bureaucracy above cities than below, and yet cities, especially megacities, are unparalleled driving forces in national and global economics. Banking group Nedbank, in partnership with the Stellenbosch University Sustainability Institute, recently launched a carbon footprinting guide aimed at advancing the control, reduction and measurement of carbon footprints in South Africa. There is no doubt that this guide, which focuses on providing practical carbon footprint guidance for a variety of companies and organizations, is very much needed in the marketplace. It is effectively an, 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 an enabler for companies and other organizations, not only to act more sustainably from an environmental perspective, but also to introduce cost-effective savings across their operations, resulting in improved financial sustainability too. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.